Hey y'all, this is BG Codes and I am Brad Garropy. In the previous video, we enabled hot module reloading with the Webpack dev server. And in this video, we're gonna talk about taking our single configuration file and splitting it into two, a production configuration and a development configuration. As always, the starter code I'll be using is on GitHub and it will be linked in the description below. So let's get going. Let's start off by running our npm start command, which will bring up the webpack dev server. You'll notice here that we're getting this warning at the bottom that says the mode hasn't been set and webpack will use production as the default. You can set mode to development or production to enable defaults for each environment. Now there's great documentation on webpack's website for this that I'll link below in the description, but Ultimately, it kind of boils down to two things. One, in development, Webpack isn't going to minify your code as aggressively, and it will produce better source maps to help in debugging. And in production, Webpack is going to do its best to make the smallest bundle possible, which means lots of minification and smaller source maps. Of course, all this is configurable with the Webpack configuration, but we're just going to go with the defaults based on whatever mode we choose. So let's go ahead and start trying to take our single configuration file and splitting it into two. The first thing we're gonna do is let's rename this to common because we're not gonna be actually using this configuration file directly. This is gonna be used as a base configuration where our production and our development configurations actually extend this one. So we'll rename it to common and then let's create two new configurations. We'll make a webpack.prod.js and a webpack.dev.js. And these are gonna be just the configuration values that need to extend common. So we'll create our basic configuration, which is just a module that exports an object. And the only property we need in prod and dev is the mode to say in production, we are going to use the mode production and in development, we are going to use the mode development. So I'm just going to copy and paste this to each of our production and development configurations. And now this isn't all we need. We need a way to actually extend the common configuration in the production and development configurations. And Webpack has, actually has a great package for this. Uh, so we're gonna install something called Webpack Merge. Again, we'll install this as a dev dependency because this is only used at build time. And it's called Webpack Merge. And now in each of our production and development configurations, we're going to need to uh, extend the common configuration using Webpack Merge and export that. So the first thing we're going to have to do is require the merge function from Webpack Merge as well as the common configuration. From webpack.common. And so as we're exporting, we don't want to just export config, which is only has a mode. We actually want to export the merged version of the common config with this config that we have here. And let's, uh, let's just rename this for clarity prod config because we are in the prod file right now. Cool. Now we can do something very similar for Webpack dev. Again, we'll start off by importing the merge module from webpack merge, as well as the common config. And we'll rename this config to dev config for clarity. And so what we want to export isn't just the dev config, but we want to export the common config merged with the dev config. So now we have two fully functional Webpack configs, which extend 
the common configuration into a development and production configuration. Now we have to set up our NPM scripts to use these. Remember, by default, Webpack looks for a webpack.config.js file, but we no longer have that. So now we need to specifically tell start, build, and build watch what configs to use. So we're going to say look for Webpack. Let's say start should be dev.js. When we're building, it should probably use our production config. And watching, again, we're probably in development mode. So we will specify config with the dash dash config option. And let's make two more scripts. So one for build dev and one for build prod. This way, when you're running continuous integration, you can specifically call out what it is that you want to build. And that's all it takes is to point it to a different config and Webpack will build differently. So let's take a look at what this actually does. So let's run the build dev script. If you look at the output right here, index.js is four kilobytes and it took 120 milliseconds. If we build prod, you'll notice that index.js is only 67 bytes. The size difference is definitely big and that's because production is doing the best that it can to deliver the smallest, most optimized bundle it can. And so you should kind of do this for all the different environments that you have, uh, development, QA, stage, and prod. You can extend this Webpack configuration as much as you'd like. And this is how you do it by using the Webpack merge package and extending the common configuration. And speaking of different environments, in the next video, we're going to cover environment variables in Webpack. So I'll see you there. Thanks.